Yeah, it's no good. The second wave has already arrived. So I'm going to try a secret strategy from our Italian ancestors, which is called Tactical Relocation, also known as Retreat. I'm pulling all forces away and will simply ignore this whole area. The Teladi can deal with the Xenon if they want. They are currently moving a strong border patrol fleet with cap ships. And uh, I let them deal with the problem. It's not that I don't have enough other sectors to worry about. This one here, uh, I plan to make a strict uh, trading hub out of it, but uh, if we have that many people, uh, such a high population, then uh, why not do something with them? I have already unlocked the tax perk and I finally decided to turn this into a uh, station production hub. Right now I'm producing my factories down here and uh, if we have a secondary sector we can uh, for one increase our station production output if we want and also uh, unlock the cheaper stations perk that will make us uh, more effective in factory production and i'm also going to unlock the insurance policy because if you have such a high population like this sector then you're gonna get frequent bad events if you don't do that and we really don't need uh, storage fire events which uh, cost us random resources or a xenomorph running rampant through the population or something like that. I think this is going to be a good station production sector. We already have a lot of ore in here so that is uh, a main component for station construction and it should be very safe from any attacks so it makes sense to level that up. And I might as well also think about uh, putting another ship production sector in this area because uh, if the Xenon are so strong now they might already attack my home system and then we would lose our entire ship production capability and that would basically be almost the end of the game so that is probably a good idea to do just set up a secondary shipyard uh, but for now I'm just keeping the perk slots open uh, that gives us the maximum flexibility I also lost the jump beacon again uh, second time in Antigone Memorial so I ramped up the uh, guarding fleet to three fighters now uh, because they weren't quick enough to kill the Xenon scout before infection I think this might also have to do with my uh, out of sector damage adjustments because everything is slower so I might also uh, adjust the script that controls the uh, jump beacon infection and make that a bit slower but uh, I actually like that your jump beacons are so endangered and that forces you to really think about where you want to place them not just mindlessly spamming them all over and you also need to guard them so that is very nice always like if the player has to make strategic considerations. Yeah, the Teladi will totally kill the Xenon. We could watch that if we want, because I have the previous uh, beacon guards from the sector docked at the outpost. Let's wait a bit, then the Teladi will arrive and we can watch the fireworks. Oh, 
Command accepted. Quickly teleporting over. Entering system, Queen Space. Teladi Border Patrol, Condor. Yeah, this carrier here <clears throat> should eat them for breakfast. You can also see these uh, blue missiles that are fired from from the uh, Teladi capships. Uh, those are actually uh, part of the new missile rebalance. It uh, basically works like this: uh, the bigger a ship is, the better the missile is going to be. So each uh, ship class will be limited to a certain missile type. And uh, especially cap ships have very powerful missiles. And the biggest change to the standard balance in Standard Mayhem 3 is uh, that they are very, very cheap. And there was uh, never a real reason to use missiles because they were so expensive. Uh, you have to produce them with silicone mines, silicone wafers. And uh, the mining stations had to produce very long to produce even the basic missiles. And then you also had uh, added stuff like uh, missiles not able to hit enemies because uh, chaff defense was so strong and they got shot down by lasers and stuff. And all of that is changed now. And the main limitations for the new missiles, the new missile balance, is that the best missiles are reserved for cap ships. And that is already a natural limitation because uh, you can only have so much of them because the ships themselves are so expensive. So the consumables, the missiles, they are very cheap and they get even cheaper uh, with bigger ship size. Uh, but the ships are the limitation now. So these corvettes here, they also carry decent missiles, but their missiles are much weaker than the ones of these cap ships. And that also helps the NPCs to use proper missiles. Because in the previous uh, standard balance, uh, these ships here, these corvettes, could already use the most powerful missiles which were in the game. And that gave them uh, a lot of yeah, potential missile damage they could dish out over time. And so missiles needed to be very expensive to balance that out. And with the new balancing, the missile damage over time will be rather low, because ships can only use missiles which are appropriate to their size. So these corvettes will never fire stuff like a, a heavy torpedo which does insane amounts of damage. Only a ship like this can do this. And since the uh, rate of fire is so low and the amount of cap ships is low, 
the amount of heavy torpedoes fired will also be very low. And that gives you the best, um, yeah, the, the best balancing handle to uh, prevent that missiles are becoming overpowered. Because the main reason why they were almost useless was the high price, and now they are very cheap. We also just saw, don't know if you realized, we just had a small fighter which was teleporting back into its carrier. This has to do with the change that the transporter device is now a default equipment for all ships. That allows these carriers to teleport sh incoming ships directly into the docking bays. And that makes... Uh, the carrier is much more effective uh, when they are fighting in sector. Because previously, the docking procedures for NPCs were always that these, uh, for example, this is a small M7 carrier, can carry 25 fighters. And during a fight, he would need to be stationary, and then the fighters would approach in a a very far away um, angle to get to the docking position, then they would uh, turn and make a very slow approach into the docking bay. And all of that happened during the most intensive fights. So during the time the fighters were useless, the carrier was useless, most of the time uh, they got shot down and uh, the only way to fix this was to leave the system because uh, then the uh, docking is only um, yeah, very simplified. The fighters just have to travel to the uh, icon of the carrier and then they will instantly dock. Now that is uh, changed and uh, out of sector and in sector are basically the same in regards to docking. So there is no real reason to leave a system to make your docking process more effective. Because in sector will now even be a bit faster because you have a small range for the teleporting device. So that is another small change with a huge impact for the battle. Because uh, ships seem to dock uh, when they switch targets. So if you have two enemies and the fighters were attacking one of them, then they would most often, uh, I believe, they would return back to their carrier and then initiate the slow docking process, then launch again and attack the second fighter. And this was completely useless. So this teleporting ability increases the effectivity of most NPC fleets a lot. Makes their carriers and fighters much more useful when the player is present. And of course, for the player, it will also be much easier to handle because you don't need to install transporter devices on your ships anymore. It's just uh, an added convenience for the player. <laughs> 